Let us start today's lecture. Today we are going to discuss theory of combing. The first lesson about the theory of combing is when a fiber tries to cross the combing zone, what sort of action it is going to experience. So, let us look at this diagram which is now visible in this slide. You see there are quite a few lines which are vertical lines and these lines are indicating different things like N N 1 the extreme left hand line is indicating nipper action line that is a nipper gripping line we can say. The other extreme line which is A A 1 is representing detaching roller nip and as of now the nipper is as its closest approach to the detaching roller. That means, this is the minimum distance between the nipper and the detaching roller. The line C C 1 represents line of action of the cylinder comb that the cylinder comb starts combing the fringe which is gripped by the nipper at the point N N 1 or along the line N N 1 out of that it starts combing from C C 1. So, there is a part left between the line N N 1 and C C 1 which remains always uncombed by the cylinder comb. The other line which is T T 1 is representing the line of action of top comb. So, top comb when it descends, this is the place where it is going to descend. So, these are the different lines. The other thing is the detachment distance is being shown by D. The other thing is S represents the fringe length combed by the cylinder. Look at the S is spans from line C C 1 to line A A 1. X represents the distance between the top comb and the detaching roller nip. Look at X and see it is spanning a length from T T 1 to A A 1. Therefore, this is the zone which is the distance between the top comb and the detaching roller nip and Z represents an overlapping zone that is the fringe length comb by both cylinder comb and top comb. So, Z is representing that particular zone on the fringe which will be combed both by the top comb and the cylinder comb. So, now let us go to the next slide. This slide initially looks little difficult to understand, but let me explain. We have all those lines which we have seen in the previous slide also N N 1, C C 1, T T 1 and A A 1. What we are going to see now is this how a fiber is going to move and what kind of action is happening on it. Let us assume that all the fibers are straight and parallel with respect to each other and the amount that we are going to feed is always fixed and that is F. So, F is the feed per cycle. Now, look at the fiber represented by the line here which is fiber position 1. So, now imagine that we are trying to understand how a particular fiber which is in the lap sheet is approaching the combing zone and what is going to happen on it as it tries to pass through the zone. So, in the very first cycle a fiber arrives in the combing zone. So, that is what is being shown by the number 1 you see a line has been drawn and the line has crossed the 
another line N N 1. So, this one is the fiber, N N 1 is the nipple and it has crossed the nipple line. So, it is gripped by the nipple and so therefore, it has just entered the combing zone. Now, in this cycle, what is going to happen on this fiber? Only B part of the fiber is beyond the nipple line, but this part B has not yet reached the line CC1 that is the line of action of the cylinder comb. And therefore, even though part of the fiber is inside the combing zone, till this fiber is not going to be combed by the cylinder comb. So, it is within this combing zone, but will remain uncombed by the needles of the cylinder or half lap. Nothing is going to happen to this fiber now. Now, go to the next cycle that is second cycle. In the second cycle, the same fiber will be moving forward by an amount f because f is the length we are going to feed every time. The operation is always discontinuous as we have discussed earlier and we the way we feed the fiber, the fiber moves in steps and each step is of length f. Now, as of now in this second cycle, what we can see that the part of the fiber length which is crossing the line C C 1 is B 1. So, B 1 is the projected out length which will be combed by the cylinder comb in second cycle. The rest of the part of the fiber will remain uncombed. So, the second cycle only B 1 part that is this part from here to there this part is going to be combed by the cylinder comb, rest of the part will not be combed. But the fiber has not yet reached the detaching roller nip. Therefore, the fiber will still there, will be there in the combing zone. Now, we will go to the third cycle. The same fiber will be moved forward by another f, where f is the always the feed length. So, now, now let us see the fiber and if we look at this fiber in the third cycle, then we see that the part B 1 that is this part here and the B 2 part, B 1 plus B 2 part is now in front of the cylinder comb line and therefore, the entire B 1 plus B 2 will be combed by the needles of the cylinder rest of the part is not going to be combed. However, out of B 1, B 2, B 1 has already been combed in the previous cycle. Therefore, B 1 part gets combed twice and B 2 part gets combed once in this particular cycle. And the fiber is yet to reach the detaching roller nib. Therefore, the fiber is not going to be withdrawn by the detaching roller. It still remains in the combing zone, it has not been able to cross. The fiber being long, it is not going to be extracted as west also. So, let us go to the fourth cycle, the same fiber is moved forward by another f. So, in the fourth cycle what we see that the fiber end has reached the detaching roller nip A A 1. Now, the part which is in front of the cylinder comb is B 1, B 2 and B 3. So, this part is going to be combed by the needles of the cylinder and therefore, we can say the B 1 part gets combed here also, then the B 1 part got combed in the second cycle, in the third cycle, in the fourth cycle. So, B 1 part got combed thrice, B 2 part gets combed twice and B 3 part gets combed only once. Now, what will happen in the fifth cycle, the fiber is going to be detached now, because it has reached the detaching roller nib, fiber is going to be withdrawal. Therefore, B 1, B 2, B 3 part of the fiber is going to be combed by the needles of the cylinder and the degree of combing 
is also not same. This or the intensity of combing is not same. V1 part gets combed twice, V2 twice and V3 part only once. The rest of the part of the fiber that is beyond or behind the line CC1, if you look at this fiber, this part of the fiber is not going to be combed by the needles of the cylinder at all. They will not be combed at all. So, what we can say now is this in this diagram that the same it is the same diagram being shown again. The part B1 gets combed thrice represented by this rectangle, B2 part gets twice and B3 part gets combed once by the needles of the cylinder. And the rest of the part of the fiber is getting combed by whom? It is only going to be combed by the top comb only. So, the tail part of the fiber is going to be combed by the, by the top comb, but there is overlapping zone which is Z. So, this overlapping zone Z which is D minus C plus X, we can easily make it out from the geometry of this zone, it is easy to find it out what, what is the value of Z. Z is going to be the total determinant distance D minus C and minus X. So, it is going to be D minus C plus X and the degree of combing is defined by this formula. It is the number of times the end of a fiber is combed while crossing the combing zone and this value is going to be D minus C by F. But what is D minus C? D minus C is the basically S. This value is D minus C. That is, it is the distance between the line of action of the cylinder comb and the detaching roller nib. So, this is the fringe which is going to be combed always by the needles of the cylinder or half lap. So, that distance is S divided by F gives you a value, a numerical value we call it degree of combing. So, degree of combing therefore, depends on two factors, if it is the value of F and the value S. So, if I feed a fiber slowly, that is if I make the steps smaller and smaller, if I reduce F, the degree of combing is going to increase. That means, if I reduce the feed length, we can say that is one particular fiber is going to be combed several times. It all depends on the value of F and the value S, where S in a way depends also on the way the machine has been designed. So, this is what it is and you see there is a zone which is called overlap zone. That is the zone say where the fiber is going to be combed by both the top comb as well as let us look at this zone. This part of the fiber already has been combed by the cylinder needle and also it will be combed by the top comb needles. This part therefore, called the overlap zone part of the fiber is going to be combed by both types of comb, the top comb as well as the, the needles or the wire points of the half lap. The rest of the part is going to be combed only by the top comb. So, the tailing part combing is taken care of by the top comb only and the front part of the same fiber is going to be combed by the needles of the cylinder and that too the forward most part is going to be combed more number of times and the successive parts will go be get combed less and less. This is how the combing process is going on and every fiber, each and every fiber is going to experience a similar kind of treatment by the your the needles of the cylinder and the top comb. We can conclude by saying this, while crossing the zone, a fiber is subjected to different degrees of combing, portion correspond to overlap zone is combed by both cylinder and top comb, 
the tail part of a fiber is combed by top comb only. The intensity of combing by cylinder comb reduces from leading to trailing end. Leading end is combed more than the trailing end. Trailing end gets combed only once by the needle, by only one row of needles. That was you to remember that the top comb has only one row of needles, whereas the half lap has multiple row of needles. That may be 16 to 18 row of needles. So, whenever this half lap is acting or the cylinder combing is happening on the fiber, 16 to 18 rows of needles is act, they are working on the fiber. But the tail part, when it is passing through the top comb, it is only getting combed once by only one row of needles. Therefore, the top comb needles have to be much more denser than the, the density of the needles on the half lap or cylinder comb because they have to do more work. They are getting only one opportunity to comb the tailing part of the fiber. So, they are very closely spaced. To efficiently comb the trailing ends of fiber, the top comb needles needs to be made denser. The denser means in comparison to the density of needles that we see on the half lap. Okay. So, this part is over now. Now, we move on to another concept called boundary length. We all know that combing is basically a fiber shorting machine. It is segregating the fibers. That is, we want basically to segregate the long fibers from the shorter ones. That is the basic purpose of the combing process or combing machine. The additional advantage we get, which is that we open the fibers again we separate the fibers, we can remove some amount of naps and some other impurities which are still left in the uh, lap and the other. These are the additional advantage we get because of the combing process, but the machine has been primarily designed to segregate the fibers into two groups and taking out one group from the other. That is the main purpose. Okay. Now, when we want to discuss about the boundary length, we are have to be very clear about these two, that is the order in which three important action takes place. What are these three actions? Detachment, combing and lap fit. Who comes when? The order in which this is happening in a machine. In the case of forward fit, detachment after detachment, cylinder combing operation takes place. Followed by cylinder combing, we feed the lap, we feed the fresh lap, then again we go for detachment. So, this is how the order is. In the case of backward feed, detachment, after detachment, we feed the lap, and then we go for combing. After combing, the fringe is fed forward and detachment again happens. So, you see that with respect detachment left fit combing, here detachment combing left fit. So, this order has an important bearing and rest of the things remain same. This is what actually changes when you move from forward fit to the backward fit. The other thing which changes that the name itself signifies this that forward feed basically means when the assembly, nipper assembly will move forward direction, the feeding operation will take place. And in the other case, when the nipper assembly is moving backward, then we are feeding the lap. And due to this uh, timing of feeding, uh, 
we know given this name forward feed and backward feed. Okay. Now, we will look at this diagram first. The left hand side, the diagram that we have a nipper plate, feed roller, the top bottom and top nipper plate and only the detaching rollers also being shown and the detachment setting, the distance from the nip line of the nipper plate to the nip line of the detaching roller is basically E. So, this is what a simplistic diagram of this zone. Now, at the end of detaching process, all fibers of length greater than E are detached. If from here to distance from here to here is E and the detaching is going on, from the detaching ends, obviously any fiber spanning the length E will be able to be detached because they will be able to just reach the nip of the detaching roller and therefore, they all will be removed and they will be part of the comb sliver. So, at the end of detaching we can write all fibers length greater than E are detached and all fibers so which are less than E is not going to be detached. Now, the same thing this will also let us look at the staple diagram this is a very simplistic staple diagram the actual table diagram does not look like this, but this is a very approximate diagram. Let us say the diagram looks like a triangle and the detachment sitting E is shown here in the staple diagram by the line M n. M n is representing basically the length E. So, if I say the at the end of the detaching process all fibers greater than E is going to be detached. That means, anything which is on the left hand side of the line M n in the staple diagram all fibers which are falling on the left hand side of M n will be detached and those which are on the right hand side of M n will be not be detached. So, they will be finally, be part of the noel. So, all fibers left to the line M n pass to the comb sliver and this is represented by what by represented by A M N C A M N C this is representing this area actually represents we can say that the fibers which will be detached. The other area which is M N B basically means they are not going to be detached so they will be part of the Noel. Now, from there now let us see what happens. After detachment what we do? Because this is a backward feed. In the backward feed what we will do? Once the detaching is over the length of the fringe is E. Now, we feed a fresh lag and therefore, the fringe length becomes E plus F. So, we feed E, so we feed F and the part which was combed earlier, but could not be detached that part is basically E. So, the length of the fringe in front of the nipper before cylinder comb starts combing is E plus F. Out of this you can say the F part which is here, it has a this part has not been combed and the rest of the part was actually combed in the previous cycle. So, we have E plus F. So, as the nipper retracts feed dollar pushes the lab by the amount F, fringe length becomes E plus F, E part combed in the previous cycle and F has been fed. So, out of E plus F, F is the part which has not been combed at all. Now, during combing what will happen? As it is shown here, any fiber end which is not caught by the nipper line is going to be extracted by the needles of the cylinder. Therefore, we can say that all fibers of length less than E plus F 
lying in front of the nipple line will be removed by the slender comb because they are loose fibers. Their trailing end is not caught by the nipple line. So, there are fibers whose length is close to E plus F and the trailing end is not caught by the nipple line. So, they will be removed by the cylinder comb is going to comb this fringe. So, this length is going to be Q R as shown in the staple diagram. So, Q R is representing this which is equal to E plus F. Therefore, all fibers to the right of this line Q bar are combed out as noel. So, you can say from here to there, there is a possibility they will be all part of the noel. So, what we see here that earlier we told that anything greater than E, the previous slide if we go at the end detaching uh, in all fibers to the left of line M n pass to the comb sliver. So, this has a possibility to be passed as a part of the comb sliver because these fibers are greater than E. But what we see here that all fibers greater than E plus A will, will be definitely they will be part of the comb sliver, but there is a possibility that fibers which are little less than E plus A could be a part of the west or noel. Hence, there is a zone Q and MR. Here, whatever fibers are falling in this length category between QR to MN, there whether they will be part of comb sliver or whether they will be part of slide or uh, part of the noel it all depends upon their actual positions in the lab. All these fibers have some possibility to be part of the comb sliver or part of the noel. That is these fibers, we are uncertain about their fate. Anything less than E, we are sure they are going to be west. Anything greater than this side, greater than QR, or E plus F, definitely they will be part of comb sliver. But when it comes to Q, M, N, R, these fibers, their fate is undecided. Some of them will be part of sliver, some of them could be part of west. Anyway, so when it is undecided, therefore, what we do to make the case simple, as it is written here, in the region Q, N, M, R, it is a matter of chance whether the fibers remain in comb sliver or pass as noel. All depends what are their positions in the lab sheet and when they are being fed, when they arrive for the first time in the combing zone, what position they take at that time. So, what we do to make the case simple, one can draw a line which is half of Q bar and M n. So, Q bar and M n, so what we say, we draw a line what is half of Q bar and M n and so that line is represented by O p. So, O p is basically half of M n and Q bar. So, if you write O p, we call it boundary length and this is half of q r plus m n and if we go keep put the value of q r in m n is going to be e plus f by 2 and therefore, we say o p is the boundary as if this is the boundary that anything any length that falls beyond this boundary will be part of noel anything that falls on the other side of the boundary, on the left hand side of the boundary, they will be part of the comb sliver. So, trapezium A O P C represents fibers going into sliver and triangle O P B, that is this part going in noil. So, this is the part we can say going as noil, the rest of the part is going as sliver. This is to simplify the 
actual you know, situation in order to get you know make some idea about the fibers going as west and the fibers going in the combs fiber. So, what we get here is that the boundary length O p is E plus f by 2, where E represents the detachment distance and f is the amount of feed per cycle. Now, from here we move to forward feed. So, forward feed the treatment is exactly same. So, the concept is also exactly same. In the forward feed, the operation sequence if you look at it detachment combing feed is a little different. Earlier it was detachment feed combing, now it is detachment combing and then we are feeding. So, order of between combing and feed has changed with respect to detachment. Detachment if we is, is a reference point then the order has changed. Earlier feed was after detachment and then combing, now we comb it first and then we feed it that is the difference. So, after detachment the fringe length is going to be again E, when the detachment should over the length of the fringe will be left in the nipper plate is going to be equal to the detachment distance which is equal to E. All fibers having length less than E are extracted as noel which is represented by Q B R. Look at this Q B R because we can say because their length is less than E. So, they will not be able to reach the detaching roller nip hence they will be extracted as noel. So, many of the fibers of length less than E is going to be extracted as noel. Now, the fringe length is E and detachment is over, we are left with the fringe of length E. Now, we comb that fringe. So, during combing all fibers which are not gripped by the nipper plate will be removed by the cylinder comb and once the combing is over, the feed occurs. This feed occurs once the combing is subsequent to forward motion of the nipper, the cone fringe is pushed by the length f. So, detachment is over, then combing starts, we comb out the fringe, whatever loose fibers are there, we take it out by the cylinder needles and a cone fringe is left, but now the cone fringe will be moving towards the detaching roller for detachment, but in between we are feeding now. So, we are pushing the fringe by an amount small f and what is the implication of that? Because fibers are all fibers are pushed by a length small f, therefore detaching roller detach all fibers length greater than E, not only them, but also those fibers shorter than E by small f as they are pushed forward by an amount f. So, even if a fiber is less than E by an amount f, this fiber is going to be pushed by an amount f and therefore, the leading end of a short fiber we may also reach the nip of the detaching roller because just before the detaching I am pushing all the fibers by an amount f. So, a fiber as short as E minus f has a chance to be pushed by an amount f and it can land in the nip of the detaching roller and will be detached. Therefore, and these fibers represented by the trapezium A, M, N, C. So, what we can say is this that fibers which are less than E minus f, they have no chance to be detached by the detaching roller. So, all fibers of length less than E minus f will definitely go into the west, but some fibers which are in between E and E minus f, some of them will be pushed forward 
by a small amount f and they may end up reaching the detaching roller nib and therefore, they may be part of the comb slide. Therefore, we see that if m n is representing E minus f, then this arrow basically indicates that anything which is fibers which are even slightly longer than E minus f, they have a chance to be part of the comb sliver. At the same time, fibers of length E and less can be part of west. Therefore, here also we get length of fibers between M n and Q r and about their fate we are also uncertain. They could be part of west or they could be part of Combs liber. But what we are sure is that anything less than M n or E minus f will be definitely west. Anything greater than E that is from here onwards all of them will be part of Combs liber. So, about if you look at this triangle then anything in A Q R C these fibers will be part of Combs liber always. Those which is in N M B they will be always part of west, but the one which has Q M N R there there is uncertainty we are not sure how many of them is going to be part of west and how many of them are going to be part of Combs liber. So, what we do? We can find out take the mean value of m n and q bar and that mean is going to be o p here also. So, o p is going to be e minus f by 2 and that this value is represented by this line o p and we can say o p is our boundary line now. So, therefore, anything which is on the right hand side of O p, they will be part of west, anything which is on the left hand side of O p will be part of Combs liber. So, O p value here is E minus f by 2 and in the previous case the value of O p was E plus f by 2. So, boundary length is the value of boundary length is going to be different in two different types of feed where everything is same only the type of feed or mode of feed is changed from forward to backward. This diagram gives we are writing whatever we have discussed in a very concise manner now that longest and shortest fiber going to Noel about them we are always sure. The longest fiber going to an oil that will be a part of west for backward feed is going to be E plus F for forward feed is going to be E. The shortest fiber going to sliver for backward feed is going to be E and for forward feed is going to be E minus F. Fiber definitely going to sliver is greater than E plus F for backward feed and greater than E in the case of forward feed. That means, sometimes we may find that some long fibers getting into noil, even though whatever setting we have kept E, some fibers as long as E plus F can go into the part of noil. Similarly, forward feed fiber as long as E can be part of noil. This is a very you know, simplistic picture. In actual situation, even fibers longer than this also can be seen in the noil. That is the reasons are different. We will discuss why we see even fibers even greater than E plus F in the case of backward feed or greater than E in the case of forward feed are seen as a part of noil. Because our purpose is the noil should be consisting of fibers which are less than the detachment setting that is less than E. So, if we want to estimate the noil percentage based on this simplistic picture. So, as we have seen earlier the trapezium A O P C in the case of backward feed means fibers going into sliver. 
triangle OPB indicates fibers going into loyal. So, being similar triangle that is ABC and OPB, they are basically similar triangles. So, use this you know, geometrical feature of the stable diagram to find out ki what is the noil percentage. So, noil percentage P is the ratio of weight of waste to the weight of feedstock. Therefore, percentage well, noil percentage P will be OBP by ABC, the area of OBP divided by area of ABC and multiplied by 100. So, and we can show that is OP square by AC square into 100, which is E plus F by 2 whole square by M square, where M is the maximum length of fiber. That is from here to there, AC is basically M. So, from this diagram, we can have some estimate about the noil that we are going to generate and this is going to depend on the factors, uh, parameters like E, F and M. These are the three parameters which will tell us that how much noil we can expect and how these parameters is going to affect the noil percentage. That is, if we increase E, what is going to happen? If we increase F, what is going to happen? So, for backward feed, this is the formula and for forward feed, exactly same approach. We know that OP value is going to be E minus F by 2. So, everything remains same. P percentage is going to be this now. Instead of E plus F by 2, it is E minus F by 2 whole square by M square. Rest of the things remain same and this can give us some estimate uh, which may not be no, correct in the sense that when you actually do an experiment and find the values for a given uh, setting and the feed, uh, if we try to find out okay, what is the value I am getting of waste and if we try to estimate from this formula, they may not match because in the formula there are certain assumptions and one of them, one of the assumptions which is really untrue is all the fibers are straight and parallel, which is actually not true. When you fit the lab, most of the fibers are not straight and parallel. Fibers are hooked, fibers are inclined displaced in the lab. So, that there is a lot of disorder in the arrangement of fibers and because of this, there will be differences. But even then, this formula tells us how the factors are going to or how the parameters are going to affect the noil percentage. So, we can say an increase in boundary length will cause noil to increase from the formula itself. For a given fiber and process, noil level increases as the feed mode is changed from forward to backward because boundary length is more in backward feed for identical setting. So, backward feed will always give you more waste. So, if we want to extract more waste, we have to switch from forward to backward feed and if we want less waste, then we have to go for forward. An increase in detachment distance E will cause noil to increase in both modes of feed. That is the simplest way to increase noil, that is you increase the detachment setting or distance. An increase in length of feed F for forward feed, noil loss will reduce, for backward feed it is going to increase. That means, what is the effect of feed length? It depends on the mode of feed or type of feed. Forward feed, loss is going to be less, noil will be less and less. Backward feed is just opposite, noil will be more and more. Now, that was a very simplistic picture, we will try to understand the actual now. So, we will discuss mechanism of noil extraction. See, why are you so much concerned about the noil, especially on 
in combing process is that cotton is very costly fiber. And not only that, the, the cost of the fiber raw material is almost 60 percent to 65 percent of the cost of yarn. And therefore, a little saving wherever possible of raw material can affect the profitability of the process. And hence, therefore, in the entire no, conversion stage of fibers to yarn, we are very much concerned about the loss of fibers, especially fibers which are generally long in nature, fibers which are very short, they will not be of much use to us and we have to get rid of them in order to improve the quality of the yarn. But we should not lose unnecessarily long fibers. And therefore, people have studied the mechanism on oil extractions and uh, in order to know the why and how the oil is extracted by the machine. And if we know the mechanism, then also we will be able to you know find out ways and means to control or to have a check on the loss of oil. Okay. With this, let us start now. See here again the combing zone is shown as we have seen earlier and I have shown in this diagram two types of fiber. There are some black colored fibers, they are generally long fibers let us say and there are some orange colored fibers, they are typically short fibers. So, it is a mixture of long and short fibers. Removal of short fibers in combing does not take place merely by frictional force exerted by the cylinder needles on the fibers. This statement is important that the removal is not merely because of the in the, the friction between the needles of the half lap and the fiber. The removal is due to acceleration of fibers behind the top comb needles. This statement is very important to know. This is the acceleration of the fibers behind the top comb needles while detaching process is going on. What happens? During detachment, fibers gripped by the detaching roller will have their trailing ends deeply embedded in the uncombed part of the lap. So, generally long fibers are much longer than the detachment distance. So, when they arrive the detaching roller nip, part of the length, the tail part of the same fiber is still left in the uncombed part of the lap. And there, they are in the entangled fashion. If you remember the how much draft we give to this fiber to make a lap, very little. That means, we are not really improving the parallelization of the fibers too much while we, we are making a lap which will be fed for combing operations. Very limited draft is given so that we do not want over parallelization of fibers. We want the fibers to be little parallel but not too much and there are reasons for this also. When these fibers are pulled by the detaching roller, they draw out other free fibers with them. So, when this fiber, suppose this long fiber is being pulled, this fiber is in contact with another short fibers and there is entanglement there. And therefore, when I am pulling it out, this fiber because of its contact with the shorter ones, it will try to pull the short one also. So, many short fibers will therefore, be accelerated or they will be pulled forward because they are in contact with the longer ones which are being detached now. This is what is going to happen. What will happen now? While these shorter fibers are trying to move along with the longer ones, what comes in between is a barrier that is 
the top comb. So, top comb will arrest many of these short fibers which are trying to move along with the long fibers. Therefore, the top comb job is to arrest such fibers to move in. The longer fibers are being positively gripped by the detaching roller nib, they will be pulled and they will be able to pass through the needles in between the spaces of the needles, they will pass through. But the shorter ones may not be able to pass through. Some of them sometimes pass through because because what? Why? Because the dimension of a fiber is much smaller than the spaces between the needles. Whereas fiber diameter goes in microns, 15 microns, 20 microns or 18 microns cotton fiber. But the space between the needles of the top comb is not in micron. So, some of these short fibers they will be piggybacking the longer ones. So, while they are being pulled by the detaching roller nib, some short fibers will be able to pass through the spaces between the needles and even though they are short, they will pass through and they will ultimately end up in the combed sliver. They are not supposed to be there, but still some of them will land there, we cannot stop but many of them will be arrested. Many of them will be arrested and they will accumulate where? They will accumulate behind the top comb as it is being shown here. You look at this accumulated fiber shown by the red lines. The process influence short fibers more than the longer ones and hence short fiber removal is more, more effective. Now, when they accumulate behind the top comb, most of them will not be able to move through. So, they remain there in the fringe itself behind the top comb and what is now going to happen? In the next cycle, the comb or needle is going to take them out. The major task of the cylinder comb is to remove these accumulated fibers behind the top comb in the next cycle. So, in every cycle, we are basically you know, creating a lot of accumulated fibers behind the top comb, and these fibers will be removed by the needles of the cylinder comb in the next cycle. That is how the acceleration is important. Acceleration of fibers behind tom comb is likely to shorten fiber extent of long fibers which are yet to reach the touching roller nib, but has crossed the top comb line. This also can happen. Like these green fibers are shown here, if fiber is long, but its end was probably entangled with another long fiber which is being pulled and therefore, this fiber, the, see the green fiber is long enough to actually cross the detaching roller nib, but because the other end was pulled by another long fibers, so it comes and gets accumulate behind the top comb. The trailing part of such long fibers are embedded in the uncombed part of the lab, whereas the front part has crossed the top comb line as it is shown in this diagram. This is also going to happen for some long fibers. And during detachment, the front portion remain undisturbed as it is held in between the top comb needles like it is shown this green fiber from this part from here to there is undisturbed. It has not yet raised, but it is there in front of the top comb, this remains undisturbed. However, the back portion is accelerated by neighboring fibers being withdrawn. This causes the back part of the fibers to accumulate. So, we see so the accumulation part here and here as we you know discussed earlier, these long fibers which otherwise would have gone into sliver will now be part of waste. So, even though they are long, you see because the trail part has crumbled, because they were pulled by their long neighbors. So, the trailing part accumulated behind the top comb as a result 
the fiber extend reduced. So, the long ones has become short now. It is neither has the detaching roller nip and the, the other end of the fiber is just behind the top comb. So, what is going to happen? The next cycle, all these green fibers are going to be extracted also. Even though they are long, they will be extracted as a part of west. And therefore, we always see that in the west or in the Nile, there are quite a few long fibers. This is the reason why we get long fibers in the west. So, function of top comb in the Nile removal, the top comb accounts for about 80 percent of the total waste removed by the comber. Suppose if we remove the top comb and the combing is done by the cylinder comb only, we will find waste has reduced a lot. So, when the top comb is not there, there will be tremendous reduction in waste. The top comb by itself does not remove any ex or extract fibers. Top comb itself does not remove any fiber. It prevents lot of fibers from going into the sliver by adjusting them by its needles. These fibers accumulate behind top comb and are removed by the needles of the cylinder. The comb bar head is basically a single zone drafting system between feed and detaching roller and fiber control is also exercised by the top comb. This is also another function of the top comb. So, detaching zone also can be seen as a drafting zone because I am feeding the lap and I am from the other end I am pulling. So, when there is a feed rate and the pulling rates are different, we call it drafting. So, detach, so therefore, the process of detachment is also a kind of drafting and the top comb needles is actually helping in controlling the fiber movement. So, from that angle if we see is a drafting zone like we have pressure bar in the case of no in the case of draw frame. What is the purpose of pressure bar? To prevent and control acceleration of short fibers in order to improve the regularity of the sliver. So, we introduced a pressure bar there. From a similar you know, point of view, we can see that the whatever the pressure bar is doing is basically applying friction to the fibers and therefore not allowing them to get accelerated out of turn. Here also the top comb is doing a similar job. It is also applying in a way friction to the fibers which are passing the detaching zone and restraining the out of movement, out of turn movement of many fibers. Therefore, if I do not have, do not keep the top comb and make a sliver and find out the regularity, we will find it is less regular, it is uneven because top comb is not doing its job. So, therefore, the part of the top comb is that it helps in improving the regularity of the sliver and it also prevents the shorter fibers to move in and though itself it cannot remove anything, but it pass on the removal job to the needles of the cylinder. It causes fibers to accumulate behind it, but itself cannot really take them out and that job is being done by the needles of the cylinder comb. Therefore, two important element of the machines are working in such a way that they are as if helping each other. The top comb has a marked effect on sliver regularity. Without top comb, the sliver is irregular as I told you due to lack of fiber control and with very close top comb needles, irregularity again may increase due to drafting failure. This is also true. Then if I, uh, the, the 
needles are very, very close to each other, not appropriate to the fineness of the fiber. See, top comb needles are not for different types of fiber or different fineness of fiber, we have different top comb needles. Same needle density is not used, they are different. Like it is shown here, coarse combing 66 needles per inch, medium combing 72 needles per inch, fine combing 80 needles per inch. For coarse combing, if you use this needle, then what will happen? Many fibers may break and cyber also will be irregular. So, the needle density has to be appropriate to the fineness of fiber and these densities people have worked out to depending upon the type of fiber we are going to process. There must be adequate space between needles to allow detaching rollers to draw fibers freely from comb frame. And if we offer too much resistance by having too many needles per unit length, then the too much you know, frictional force will develop on the fibers when the fibers are being detached and many fibers will break because of this reason. So, that is what also one has to keep in mind. So, with this we will close today's session. Thank you.